What up, what up, y'all? We, what up? We feel what it do. Welcome back to the We Feel, y'all. Welcome to you. If you're new, hey, welcome to you too. My name is La, La T, and I'm a spiritual reader, a channel messenger, bringing messages from the spirit, from the alpha, the omega, mm -hmm. the infinite intelligence. Yes, the word, aka the principal thing, and the breath of life, the life force, the holy chi. Y'all, warning, and, 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 might not want to stick around for this session if you are not able to have your belief challenged. We are a spiritual reader, a channeled messenger. We are not religious, yo. And we have a message that we have been called to bring, and it may be challenging to some who um are kind of rigid in their belief system and are not able to question the system okay so just want to give you that warning hands up might get a little rocky might get a little rough for those again who are not able to question who are rigid to a specific type of uh religious doctrine or system so if you stick around stick around because it's going to be you know what the most high God tell me to bring. And uh, we're going to bring it. And we're not going to apologize for it. Nope. It is what it is. You take it. What resonates. And if it don't resonate, don't take it. I say four of swords rest on the ten of pentacles. Eight of pentacles. Yes, yeah, the work, work of the kingdom, I feel. So bring rest and restoration and recovery. Hierophant. This here. We're going to do a little bit of speaking based on what the Most High God tell me to say. And that's all I will say is what they tell me to say. Thank you to the Alpha and Omega for being here, for guiding this message. We see seven of swords. We see strategy, strategic, something that is designed to kind of stab you in the back, hold you back, siphon off of your light, off of your energy. I felt something. And we kind of brought an energy, something like that, a reading, something like that along those lines earlier today. So if this interests you, it might stand on what we read earlier. And I'm not for sure how they will mesh up, how they will support one another. But the, it's something to the Alpha and Omega who bring it, brings the message anyway. It is not on to me. It is not on to me. We see the world. We see completion world energy yeah i hear the world under a spell we yeah and it's not on to me to judge anybody's system of belief that's not what this is i don't judge it's not on to me to judge i'm only sharing what they're telling me we see infinite potential we see align with the purpose and we see fulfilling a soul contract remembering who you are beloved we see ch heart chakra opening. I'm asking for the Most High God to open the hearts and the spiritual ears of those who are designed to hear, those who are inclined to stay and receive this message, I say, as much as that they can receive, um, and that they are willing to take in, go as far as you can go with it, okay? Um I thank you for bringing this message through me, your willing and surrendered vessel to be a messenger in this day. I thank you so much for giving me the courage to say what it is that you've given me on, given on to me to say. And we have made a commitment to be with you, to be devoted, to be diligent, and to go all the way. Thank you so much. It says, am I in my head or in my heart? Some of you may be in your head, but I ask you to open up your heart and listen with your heart instead. It is essential to have a clear, strong intention of what you desire, but it's equally important for us to detach from the outcome. It's time to surrender. Let the universe have some breathing room to work. Let go of the wheel and trust so deeply that your trust turns into gratitude for what you cannot see yet, but you know that it is coming and that is faith beloved i feel like faith is in reverse for a lot of us um 
for creation in many parts. I feel um, that the collective is under a spell. And some people may say, you can't speak for me. And I'm not speaking for you particularly. We, I'm speaking for creation and I'm speaking what's given on to me. Um, the most High God is saying that creation is under a spell. A spell, I feel, from hell, from those who fail. You know, um, there is something about the rituals and the practices that are going on, religious, sex, people who are telling lies. You are a total badass. It's to keep you weak, I feel, to spiritually weaken you, to drain your power from you. And I feel like it's something that is done to us starting from as when, from when we are children. You know, catching you right out, um, basically right out the womb. Having your parents, your parents are sacrificing children onto different types of belief systems that don't serve us, that is not onto us, that it is it is a lie, something devised to keep us weak, something that's devised to take your power away from you. And I was feeling that like in this um the rising session like feeling like there are devices against us that will drain our power, our spiritual essence, our light. And um, knowledge is power. And when you know better, you do better. And it's not about, you know, any judgment, murky thoughts. And um, it's somebody, like I said, with dark thoughts. I feel like their intention is to siphon out your energy, the energy of the collective. And they do it through your belief system. And I feel like when we subscribe to certain types of beliefs and religions that teach us to do things that are backwards, that are against self, we don't always realize what we're doing, why we do it. We don't realize um, or understand it, but we've been taught not to question. And I think that's the biggest part of why I have an issue with religion. Well, not only that's, that's not the biggest, it is the biggest. That's the biggest. It's not the only, but it's the biggest. For anybody that tells you that you cannot question, you can't question the Most High God, you cannot seek answers, you cannot have it revealed onto you, then I think it's something wrong with that we um the most high god says it moves in the fa over the face of the waters right so why are we drinking blood why are we doing rituals that say drink my blood and eat of my flesh i think it's something backwards with that i said it i said it so if you want to exit stage left now is your time to do so because that's where we at in this space right now and that's just what the most high god tell me so to say and that's what i'm gonna say it's time out, I feel, for some of these backwards practices. And, yeah, that's it because it's backwards. You know, it's nothing that's, I feel like that's, people always want to come over to this space and say that Tarot readers or, or spiritual readers or spiritualists or are working in divination where everything was called and made by the divine. How can you tell me what's divination and what's not? If the Most High God made all things it can use whatever it wants. To. It use whoever it wants to. So to say that I can't use cars and my cars don't speak is bullshit, beloved. It is. The most high God called every word in me, every single thing in creation. Creation itself is the only begotten. And to say to judge this thing or that thing or this thing or that thing is baloney. What are your intentions behind it? Why are you telling me that this specific pathway is the only pathway to salvation or that I was automatically born into sin? That don't make no sense to me. It sounds like you trying to brainwash me. You trying to indoctrinate me to follow a certain thing, something that I can't even question. Where all of the instruction is not even there. It's bits and pieces that's missing, that's been translated and rewritten. But I'm supposed to blindly follow it? I think not, beloved. No. 
And these same people will turn around and judge you and tell you who you are or what you are or what you doing is wrong. I think that's, 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 look. This right here book I was called to bring, An Ancient Science of Nature and the Human Soul. It says, the basis of Sankhya, I can't even say it, Sankhya lies in differentiating Purusha and Prakriti, that is, the human soul and nature, respectively. It is the oldest and clearest differentiation of consciousness. This book not only presents the teachings of Sankhya, but also attempts to reconstruct it in its modern form, factoring the contributions of science. We will come to learn that Sankhya is the oldest theoretical model of intelligent design, namely the teaching that consciousness, Purusha, is the basis of all creations in the universe, which is Prakriti, and that this same consciousness is the human essence or the soul consciousness the basis of all creations in the universe and and that is the same consciousness is the human essence or soul we will come to learn that sankhya is the oldest theoretical model of intelligent design namely the teaching that consciousness is the basis of all creations in the universe and that this same consciousness is the human essence or soul. So it goes along with something that I um, often pull from and we haven't been down in it in a minute, but it is the seven laws of spiritual success. And it's right here. This book right here, Deepak Chopra. The Seven Laws of Spiritual Success. And in this book, it talks about the fact that we are pure consciousness. Everything that can exist does exist. And it comes from um, a, a single source of consciousness. We are pixels. We are pieces of the Most High God. The Alpha and Omega that called all things by its intelligence, its mind, its word. Chapter 1. The first spiritual law of success or the first spiritual law is the law of pure potentiality. This law is based on the fact that we are in our essential state, pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is pure potentiality. It is the field of all possibilities and in infinite creativity. So when we read in religious text that says the most high God moved upon the face of the deep of the waters, right? To me, water represents pure potentiality as the essence of life, the life force, like that cosmic hormonal, is that right? Not primordial bits, what I was trying to say, but a field of consciousness. It was like the field, the essence of. And when the Most High God moves in that space, it allows any and everything to potentiate. Any and everything can and will be. Whatever it desires to exist, it will be. It will develop out of that space, out of the consciousness. Pure consciousness is pure potentiality. It is the field of all possibilities. It is infinite creativity. Infinite creativity. That's why the Most High God is everything and in everything. Creation is highly diverse. And to pick any piece of creation over another piece of creation, that's why I say it's ridiculous. 
because the Most High God made all things. It says it in some people's religious texts, but then they flip it like this is this and that is that. If the Most High God says it made all things good and evil, then there's nothing that did not come from the Most High God. It can use whatever it wants to use for its will to be done. Its will, not our own will, not my dreams, not my desires, but what the Most High God called me to be. It shall be performed. It shall be done. Because that is what I am. That that I am. It is what it is, beloved. Let's get into it. Pure consciousness is our spiritual essence. That's what the back of this book just said, even though I stumbled through and it was a little bit choppy. But if you with me, then you with me. Our, that is our essence. Pure consciousness. Being infinite and unbounded, it is also pure joy. The master's joy. The joy of that which created my soul, my life. That is why joy is not of this world, beloved. It's not the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Other attributes of consciousness are pure knowledge, the word, wisdom, the principal thing. It says infinite silence, quiet your mind, meditate, perfect balance, balancing yourself. Again, the good and the evil, the fact that we have a mirroring, a duality invincibility you cannot go anywhere you are a pixel a piece of the most high god but love it you are always held within everything is now we are already here simplicity and bliss it's simple it's easy beloved you here and you here now there's nowhere that you could go you are successful just by being. And whatever you choose to be, you just be it. You just be it. You just make up in your mind that that's it. I am. And watch it unfold. Watch the bliss come out of just knowing that it's already done. I've already got the victory. It's already within me. It came in with me. Again, you make up your mind that you a writer. I mean, okay, so whoever seen the movie Sister Act, part two, right? Whoopi Goldberg was talking to Lauren Hill, and she told her, baby, if you think wake up in the morning and the only thing you could think about is singing, then you a singer. It don't matter about how many people ascribe or validate you in that, right? You a singer, Earlier today in the rising message, we said that we were already successful. We already have all the wheat that was given onto this lot. We do. We had them when we first started. Before we started, we had already had them. They were already given on to us. We just acting it out. We just seeing it unfold. That's it. That's it, beloved. You get to moving in your space and get to going, you will see that thing unfold. You make up your mind, the renewing of your mind, changing your mindset. You change your whole reality, beloved. Oftentimes, it is our mind that present, prevents us from getting the result, from seeing it, from living it. But what has a chain on your mind? What's telling you that you can't do it or you have to follow only one pathway to get to it? Is there something that might be a system of control over you, a bunch of lies that is constraining you, telling you that you can't question you, you can't question to that which made you, will tell you to seek the most high diligently, but tell you that you can only look in one place weak? That ain't diligent. That's an oxymoron. You can't look for nothing diligently if you only looking in one space. I'm looking for my keys, for the key. And I'm only looking right here. I can't find it. I don't see it. I can't find it. I can't see it. And I'm going to keep looking right here because something telling me that I can't get up and move around. That don't make sense. If I'm trying to lean on to life, why would I make a ritual that's telling me to eat something that's dead? 
What does blood have to do with the flow of life? Your vessel is made out of water. Everything like we the they look for planets with water because that's a sign that life could be present. But you gonna tell me to sip on blood? That don't make sense. People want to come over here and call me a witch, but you drink blood, beloved. That don't make sense to me. I'm talking about life and life force and life energy. But you eating flesh and drinking blood. How does that make sense? Come on, man. This is our this is our essential nature. Our essential nature is one of pure potentiality. When you discover your essential nature and know who you really are and that knowing itself, in that knowing itself is the ability to fulfill any dream you have because you are the eternal possibility, the immeasurable potential of all that was, is, and will be. The law of potentiality could also be called the, called the law of unity. The law of unity that creation is whole. Creation is complete. There is nothing broken and there is nothing missing. Nothing. And I'm not talking about just one book or one theology that says the basic instructions before leaving earth. I am talking about everything that exists everywhere. Because, see, we like to apply one religion, one text, as if it governs the entire universe. It does not. It is the instructions before you leave earth. And how do you know it's complete when in that book it tells you that things are missing? It references books in it that you can't find in it. It cannot be the complete word. And it cannot tell you your essence truly. When we know that there is Mars, Venus, Mercury, Pluto, Saturn, Uranus. Come on now. The experience of self or the self-referral means that our internal reference point is our own spirit, not the objects of our experience. The opposite of self-referral is object referral. What are you referring to and what object is it? Where is it pointing you to and what is it telling you about yourself, beloved? Are you basing your self-referral on some other object? Something else that validates who you are as a piece of consciousness, as a piece of the Most High God itself. In object referral, we are always influenced by objects outside the self, which includes situations, circumstances, people, and things. In object referral, we are constantly seeking the approval of others. Our thinking and our behavior are always in anticipation of a response. It is therefore fear-based. Who is subscribed to something that has you fear-based, that has you locked in fear? If I don't act this way, if I don't perform this way, my salvation itself is in jeopardy. I'm not froze. But who's frozen in fear? Thinking that they are going to... What, what, what would it change in your life to know that you were already in heaven? What would it change in your life to know that you were already in the kingdom? I'm not saying there's not levels to this. Oh yeah, I believe that we ascend through levels of consciousness. 
But what would it say to you to know that you were already in the presence of the Most High God on a daily, all day, every day, every second of your existence, you are in the presence of the Most High God. You're not waiting to get there. You're not on a journey to be there, but you're already there. What would that do to you? How would, how would that change your mindset? How, would, it, would it stop you from seeking something on the outside of you? Would it cause you to take a closer look at self and monitor what you do and how you think? How you praise the feeling of joy that you experience. In object referral, your internal reference point is your ego. The ego, however, is not who you really are. The ego is your self-image. It is your social mask. It is the role you are playing. Your social mask thrives on approval. It wants to control and it is sustained by power because it lives in fear. Your true self, which is your spirit, your soul is completely free of all of those things. If you were already in heaven, wouldn't you feel free? You would feel like you already made it, beloved, because you did. We, you already did. It is immune to criticism. It is unfearful of any challenge and it feels beneath no one. It feels beneath no one. Why? Because creation is whole, it's complete. There's nothing broken and there's nothing missing. There's nothing above the most high God. And we all are even. We are a unit. We are whole. That's it. And yet it is also humble. And it feels superior to no one because it recognizes that everyone else is the same self, the same spirit in different disguises, the same consciousness, the same one mind that operates under the same one law that is beholden to the Most High God, the Alpha and Omega that called it all. That is the essential difference between object referral and self-referral. In self-referral, you experience your true being, which is unfearful of any challenge, has respect for all people and feel beneath no one. Self-power is therefore true power. How can we apply the law of pure potentiality, the field of all possibilities to our lives? If you want to enjoy the benefits of the field of pure potentiality, if you want to make full use of creativity, coming away from rituals and religions that don't serve thee, lies, beloved, that give you partial understanding in order to keep you in fear and under control while they siphon out your light, using your praise to build them up. If you want to make use of the full creativity, which is inherent in pure consciousness, then you have to access it. One way to access the field is through daily practice of silence and meditation and non-judgment. Non-judgment, which means we don't look at one another and say, this is good for you and this is not. I could be judging those who practice those rituals. I may be. I'm not saying that they're all bad. And I can't say whether it's good or bad or anything. The Most High God uses everything for its purpose, for its will to be done. And if it uses that to bring others into a different level of consciousness, then so be it, beloved. 
Spending time in nature will also give you access to the qualities of the inherent field, infinite creativity, freedom, and bliss. It's one of the reasons why I love nature. The tree behind me represents so many things as a visual reminder of the cycles of life, the fact that I'm rooted to something, that those roots run deep, that there's intelligence, that there's seasons for all things. That nothing ever truly dies, beloved. It doesn't. It's just a cycle. Matter doesn't die. It only transitions from one state to another. We, people who judge us, spiritualists, will come and say that science is of the devil. How, beloved? You go to the doctor, don't you? I'm just saying, like some of the stuff is just ridiculous how we separate intelligence and use bits and pieces of it. But that is what a lot of religious sects do. They teach you to separate intelligence, to separate the most high God, separate it from and, and, and pixelate it and separate it from you. Like you are not the piece of word that was called. The most high God called you by his word. It made you you by his word. The word is written in you, all over you. You are the word resurrect in this day. Each and one of us is a piece of word, a verse, Ashe. And that's something to have joy about. That's, that's something to be blissful about, to understand it. When we see the sun, the rain, the snow, the wind, the cold, all of it. You can see it in the trees and the flowers, the bushes, the vast diversity of nature itself. We see it everywhere. But we're waiting to get there. No, beloved, you already here. You go on a journey to discover yourself only to find that you were with you all along. And these are things that we know. That our soul is with us, our spirit is with us, yet we travel out, outside, object referral to find what was within all along. When sometimes we only need to sit in silence and meditate, quiet our mind, disconnect from the noise so that we can hear that which is speaking to us, that we are connected to, that we are tethered to, what we are rooted to. Practicing silence means making a commitment to take a certain amount of time to simply be, to just be. Not become, to just be. Experiencing silence means periodically withdrawing from the activity of speech. It means periodically withdrawing from activities such as watching television, listening to the radio, or reading a book. If you never give yourself the opportunity to experience silence, this turbulence in your internal, this creates turbulence in your internal dialogue. It creates turbulence. It creates static and, and extra noise inside of yourself. Set aside a little time every once in a while to experience silence. Meditate, beloved. Quiet your mind. Just listen to yourself. Your body itself has a rhythm. It has a beating. It create. It has its own song sound. You just listen to your heart. The first things that an infant hears is your heartbeat. It listens to that sound, that resonance. It's the song that they kind of, I feel, jam out to in their early beginnings of manifested materialism. This vessel, you in there, you can hear their heartbeat. That's when babies need to be calmed down. Mothers put them up against their heart, up against their chest, so that they can hear that sound. It calms you down. It's something that's so familiar to you. <sighs> It says, simply make a commitment to maintain silence for a certain period each day. You can do it for two hours, or if that seems a lot, do it for one hour. And if you can't make it an hour, 
Go a half an hour, 15 minutes, 10, 5, beloved. Start small and wait, work your way up. Every once in a while, experience silence for an extended period of time, such as a full day, two days, and some even a whole week. Spending time in silence. What happens when you go into this experience of silence? Initially, your internal dialogue becomes even more turbulent. It wants to be stimulated, beloved. It wants to be affirmed. It wants to be validated. You feel an intense need to say something. I know people who absolutely go crazy the first day or two that they commit themselves to an extended period of silence. A sense of urgency and anxiety suddenly overcomes them. But as they stay with the experience, their internal dialogue begins to quiet. And soon the silence becomes profound. This is because after a while the mind gives up and it realizes there's no point going around and around if you, the self, the spirit, the choice maker, the ability to make the choice, the choice maker, are not going to speak, period. Then as the internal dialogue quiets, you begin to experience the stillness of the field of potentiality. You want this? If practicing this procedure for a whole day seems too difficult, then you may simply say to yourself, for the next two hours, I won't judge anything. For the next hour, I will experience non-judgment. Then you can extend it gradually. Most I had to say that. Through silence, through meditation, and through non-judgment, you will access the first law of pure potentiality. Through silence, through meditation, and through non-judgment. Don't judge anything. Knowing that everything is of the Most High God. All things. All things. Is that right? Yes. We are creation. We are whole. We are complete. We are the only begotten. There's nothing broken. And there's nothing missing. I will put the law of pure potentiality into effect by making a commitment to taking the following steps. I will get in touch with the field of pure potentiality by taking time each day to be silent, to just be. I will sit alone in silent meditation at least twice a day, most I say three times, rising, ascension, and descension, morning, noon, night. It says... Approximately 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening. You can break it up. You could do 15, 15, 15. You could do 20, 20, 20. Something like that. 20, 20, 20 is still the same 60 minutes. I will take time each day to commune with nature and silently witness the intelligence within every living thing. The intelligence within every living thing. And that's what I see when I look at my tree. The intelligence of it. The fact that it holds on lightly, it is not detached to its own leaves. That which came up out of it naturally, it knows that it will fall away. And it joyfully releases it receives what falls down around the base of it, what's going to be broken down and returned back on to self-delivering it, intelligence. It loves to see the, what blows down across the field and offers it an, its intelligence and its gifts to other things and to other spaces. Giving itself out freely. If it goes, it goes. It doesn't detract or from itself, its beingness. It's just a gift that is offering. Holding on lightly. Holding loving space. Knowing that it's still growing. It's going to be stronger in the next cycle, Ashe. 
I will sit silently and watch a sunset or listen to the sound of the ocean or stream or simply smell the scent of a flower. In the ecstasy of my own silence and by communing with nature, I will enjoy the life throb of ages, the field of potentiality and unbounded creativity. I will practice non-judgment I will begin my day with a statement. Today, I shall judge nothing. Nothing that occurs. And throughout the day, I will remind myself not to judge. And the next law is the law of giving. Giving begets receiving. And we are automatically in the law of giving and receiving just by breathing. The trees give us what we need, that oxygen that we take in. We expel what they need, the carbon. One cannot exist without the other. We are whole, we are complete, we are connected in this circle of life, my wheat. We are in the flow. We drink water because our bodies, our vessels, our vehicles need it. I don't need to drink blood to be covered by anything. It was made by the Most High God. I was born into my salvation. I'm not trying to get it. I'm not trying to earn it. It was bestowed upon me, beloved. It is my inheritance. And I will not participate in anything that takes it away from me or tells me I need to earn it. That I have to conform to get it. Or this is the only pathway there, beloved. We are creation. We are the only begotten. And yes, there are systems of control that want to steal that understanding from you. Hoard control. Making us fearful. Like there's anywhere that we could ever go. We are already here, beloved. I welcome you to the mindset that you are already you. And whatever you're searching for is already within you. You already have it. And there's nothing that you cannot go to the Most High God and question who's speaking the Alpha. That which called you, which made your light, said, let there be light. It moved upon the waters. I could lose a few. I could gain a few. It doesn't matter. The most I got going to do what it's going to do. We are unafraid, beloved. We are unafraid to speak differently in this day. And I am not alone, beloved. I am not. There are many called and chosen to step away from that which has been placed upon many of us that is siphoning out our power, sucking on our light and using wisdom that they know and that they contain and keeping us fearful and weak. I call back my power and I invite you to do the same. To the next now, beloveds. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. To love you is to love me. And I love you just like I love me because that is my capacity. I love the Alpha and Omega that made me, that called me to be the infinite intelligence, breathing, pure potentiality, word resurrect in this day. And when we come to that understanding, the power that you have within, oh, beloved, can make all this nonsense in there. To the next now, y'all. I'll share. Mm -hmm.